Good afternoon, everybody. Everything new under the sun. I got a comment from Drew Michael about hypersonic versus supersonic. And yes, I did uh, misspeak a little bit in the, the last video relating to the Rampage missile that Israel was using. Um, it is a supersonic missile. And the other nations, they're working on hypersonic missiles. Now, all these missiles uh, fly faster than the speed of sound, i.e. supersonic hypersonic, uh, but there is a definite difference between the supersonic and the hypersonic missile systems. The hypersonic missile systems, or missiles themselves, um, currently there is no defending against them. And so I thought I would do a little bit of um, research looking up and to read up about the supersonic versus hypersonic and about Israel's rampage missile, just interesting uh, military intelligence slash uh, specifications stuff to to know in terms of the weaponry um, that's being used. So Michael says, Hi Mike, the real game changer is the hypersonic missile and not the supersonic, which imply which simply means faster than the speed of sound. Hypersonic is Mach 5, or uh, five times the speed of sound. And so the hypersonics uh, are, are, are in a different level uh, than the supersonics. Um, but they're all uh, faster than the speed of sound. So, first of all, what was Israel using? So, Israel has a, a weapon called a Rampage, a missile called the Rampage. Rampage in the field. How capable are Israel's new cruise missiles recently tested in combat? The biggest thing is that these are very fast. Uh, they're obviously um, faster than the speed of sound. Um, and they also are... Uh, they fly on their own. They're GPS guided and they're long range uh, missiles um, so that they can fire them uh, from a, a significant standoff distance, uh, which is which is helpful, obviously, so that they don't necessarily have to go into Syrian airspace. They don't have to worry about getting in um, the detection zone of the air defense systems, etc. And the fact that they fly very, very fast means uh, they're likely to evade um, kind of the conventional uh, air defense systems. So let's read up a little bit about it. It says, in its latest strikes on Syrian targets carried out April 13th, the Israeli Air Force reportedly deployed its uh, indigenous rampage radar evading cruise missiles, which were placed under mass production in, in early 2019. So this is the latest technology in terms of um, the Israeli Air Force. It says the missiles were developed um, by Israeli aerospace industries and Israel uh, military industry. Uh, let's see, uh, I want to get to uh, the interesting specs. The Israeli Rampage missile is ideally suited uh, to stand off attacks. So that's where they can uh, be at a good safe distance with their aircraft from whatever the target is, fire these, and then these missiles go ahead and, and hit the targets themselves, uh, GPS guided. Uh, it says, uh, and makes use of an advanced radar cross-section reducing airframe, which makes it more difficult to intercept than older missile designs. So it's uh, it, it's difficult to intercept by the air defense systems, S-300, S-400, whatever they have, you know, the S-200, the older systems that they have. So um, they are harder um, to evade. Uh, not impossible. Hypersonic missiles are currently the ones uh, where there's no uh, known method of stopping them simply because they fly so fast, there's no um, interception um, system that uh, can, can basically uh, take them out. It says, uh, continuing oper operations in the Syrian theater provide Israeli Air Force with a valuable opportunity to test the indigenous, indigenous munition against an integrated air defense network, i.e. Russian military technology, <clears throat> which, though largely antiquated, is highly dense and do so with minimal risk of attacks on its own aircraft. So it keeps the people alive. It effectively sends in drones so they're not risking Israeli uh, military personnel. It goes on here. The Rampage reportedly allows Israeli fighters to strike under conditions we've never had before, and its entry into service was closely followed by an announcement that Russia would upgrade Syria's air defense uh, with the S-300 PMU-2 missile system. While this older S-300 variant dates back to the 1990s, its induction, uh, induction introduction still represented a considerable upgrade to Syria's capabilities. So what Syria had before was uh, even more antiquated than that. The Rampage 
it says, is comparable with Israeli F-15I heavy strike fighters, but can also be deployed by the lighter F-16 and F-35 single-engine multi-role uh, jets. This particular missile can strike targets up to 140 kilometers at supersonic speeds. However, note here in this article, it is barely supersonic. So it, it is supersonic, but just above the speed of sound. There are other platforms, i.e. the Chinese YJ-12, um, that is, is over three times as fast, apparently, as this Rampage missile. Um, that being said, the Rampage is still at a technological level that it's uh, suitable for operations in Syria against the current air defense systems that are there, and it seems to be uh, successful there. So there's no particular reason to use anything higher of higher technology. Uh, and, and there's some strategic element to this because you don't necessarily, even if uh, Israel had hypersonic missiles, you don't necessarily want to roll that out if you don't need to, if you can get away with older technology, slower technology, and it still works, then why, um, uh, why put your latest technology out there for the enemy to look at, to figure out, um, to maybe even um, re you know, get the wreckage of and uh, reverse engineer it, etc., or give Russia an excuse to uh, upgrade to S-400 and whatever their latest air defense systems are. So there's a strategic uh, point of view to using uh, older systems. As long as they basically do what you need, um, it's, it's going to be better in the long run. It says a rampage's relatively low speed not only provides targets with a considerably longer warning time, so uh, the, the, the people on the receiving end of these uh, can see these coming, and it gives you more warning time uh, for uh, interception, um, but because it is uh, faster than sound, um, most uh, you know existing regular air defense systems um, will have a hard time basically chasing them down and intercepting them. It says, it also makes the munition considerably easier to intercept for even basic low air defense, uh, level air defense systems such as Syrian S-125 or the 2K-12 KUB. Given the relative softness of targets in the Middle East, however, the vast majority uh, of which are considerably easier to neutralize than those Russian and Chinese cruise missiles were designed to counter, the Rampage can be seen as a low-cost system well-suited to carry uh, out tasks required uh, of a basic standoff cruise missile. So it's just suitable, it's just enough, it's just enough to get around the systems that they need the, this particular missile to get around at this point in time. There's no particular need for a much more technologically advanced or faster missile at this point in time. And I'm sure the IDF is working on hypersonic missiles and, and maybe even upgrading the Rampage to a, you know, a Rampage V2 or something that uh, maybe matches what uh, China has. Um, in, in this level of, or class of um, air-to-ground missiles. Um, so, interesting situation. So, I, and this, that was from militarywatchmagazine.com. So, what is the definition of hypersonic versus supersonic? And that's what I want to look at here. So, this, this article here, hypersonic missiles, what are they and can they be stopped? The U.S., China, and Russia are racing to develop hypersonic missiles, a missile system so fast... No modern defense system can stop it. It says, here's a rundown of the current and future projects. So it uh, goes over an overview. Uh, what is a hypersonic missile? A hypersonic missile travels at speeds of Mach 5 or higher, five times faster than the speed of sound, or three, uh, 3,836 miles per hour, which is about one mile per second. Some missiles, such as Russia's upcoming KH-47M2, uh, Air-launched ballistic missile are allegedly capable of reaching Mach 10, and certainly there's nothing um, that's going to be able to intercept that. Um, you know, if you're firing it with conventional uh, uh, ground-to-aircraft, uh, you know, bullets, Gatling guns, etc., I mean, you would have to lead that rocket by I don't know how far to, to hit it with that. There would be no chance of it. Um, to send a guided missile, you would need an equally fast guided missile, uh, interceptor rather, missile, uh, to get this, and so you would need a, you would nearly need a Mach 10 interceptor missile. Now, if you're ahead uh, of the unit, you could meet it halfway um, if it was heading in your direction, and maybe you wouldn't need such a fast uh, missile. But you need something close um, to to somewhat match speed to take it out. I I would think. So these can uh, travel up to distances of uh, 1,200 miles, and that's at Mach 10 speeds. Um, and again, that's, that's what uh, the U, uh, U.S. at this point in time, 
doesn't have any defense against. Although I suspect a defense against these will be some sort of air uh, air exploded uh, electromagnetic pulse device, uh, which was you know. Um, what do they call it, a, a tactical, you know, nuclear weapon or something that's exploded in the sky in the area, uh, incoming area of uh, these Mach 10 missiles, and take them out that way. Um, I don't, I, I didn't read anything about them being um, hardened to uh, EMP blasts, so I suspect that will be uh, one potential avenue. The other potential avenue is a laser defense system. Certainly a laser could track it and, uh, and, and basically burn it out of the sky. And, and that's something I haven't seen either, but I suspect um, that it would uh, probably be fairly easy for a laser, a ground-based laser to, to uh, track and take out a Mach 10 uh, hypersonic missile. Speculation on my part, um, but I don't see that why that wouldn't be possible. The laser is going at, at the speed of light, basically, so all you need is a tracking system on the ground, uh, which can basically move. It doesn't have to move Mach 10. It just has to pan around, keeping its eye, if you will, on the missile. Um, and uh, and basically burn up or melt uh, the missile out of the air by way of the laser as long as you can get the laser on it for a long enough period of time. So I don't, it's something something I was thinking about in relation to how they might defend against these. And I, you know I'm sure they're well ahead of me in terms of def uh, figuring out how to defend against these. For comparison, it says U.S. Tomahawk cruise missile, the United States Navy and Royal Navy's go-to long-range missile, is subsonic, traveling around uh, 550 miles per hour. And with a maximum distance of 1,500 miles. So what is a hypersonic cruise missile? Something that uh, goes in excess of Mach 5. <clears throat> it is non-ballistic, so it goes in a straight line, basically. Uh, let's see, I want to go back down to the bottom. What is the difference between subsonic, supersonic, and hypersonic? So subsonic missiles are slower than the speed of sound. Most well-known missiles fall into the category, like the U.S. Tomahawk cruise missile. Supersonic, a supersonic missile exceeds the speed of sound, Mach 1, but is not faster than Mach 3. Most supersonic missiles travel at a speed between Mach 2 and Mach 3, which is up to 2300 miles per hour. The most well-known supersonic missiles is the Indian-Russian uh, Brahmas, you can see in the image below there, and uh, that is currently the fastest operational supersonic missile capable of speeds about 2100 to 2300 miles per hour. And then they get into the realm again of the hypersonic. Hypersonic exceeds Mach 5, like we were uh, speaking of. And then you get into the question of who's developing, uh, who's developing the hypersonic missiles. So the U.S. is developing a range of advanced hypersonic systems, and recently awarded Lockheed Martin contracts for the de development of two systems, the hypersonic conventional strike weapon and the AGM-183A air-launched rapid response weapon. I suggest that these are probably, at this point, mutually assured destruction weapons, similar to nuclear weapons, because there's no way to defend against it. Once it's launched, it's launched. Um, but we're going to see. Um, <clears throat> the United Kingdom and France have apparently hypersonic missiles. China, China has hypersonic missiles. Russia has them as well. Can, and so this is a big question, and I'll end with this, can hypersonic missiles be stopped? Hypersonic missiles are so valuable because there is currently no operational or reliable method of intercepting them. I'm sure they've got lots of things that they're they're trying to use to intercept these, like uh, laser laser cannons, etc. But there's no current reliable uh, automated method uh, at this point. However, a defense technology progress uh, progresses, countermeasures will emerge. Uh, yes, as, as countries bring these out, um, the same countries will also uh, bring out defensive technologies because they know every other country is going to have these as well, and so they're going to need to defend against them. Technologies such as directed energy weapons, i.e. laser cannons, particle beams, or other non-kinetic weapons will likely be candidates for an effective defense against hypersonic missiles. So that's exactly what I'm saying. A laser cannon uh, is, is what would... Um, be able to defend against these since uh, literally the laser is going at the light of speed um, and all you need is a ground-based automated mechanism to point the laser in the correct direction so and uh, that's what they're talking about non-kinetic weapons something that you don't have uh, you know that isn't a mechanical weapon driven with an engine etc um, rather than you know instead of just you have energy weapons an EMP blast or a laser cannon particle beams etc so interesting stuff and I just thought I would reply and just clarify, um, yes, indeed, they are using supersonic weapons uh, in 
uh, Israel right now uh, against uh, Syrian targets. And like I say, these are suitable currently for um, the situation in Syria, for what uh, Russia has deployed there. Not only that, but of course, Russia has, or uh, Israel has <clears throat> the safety of the air cover and the threats from the United States in terms of telling Russia to stand their air defense systems down uh, against uh, the Israeli strikes that are, you know, as long as they're going after Iranian targets, basically. So I will leave there, guys. Thanks for watching. Uh, I thought I would do a video on all this stuff. It's interesting technology, and uh, it's going to be interesting to see how they use these uh, weapons in the last days. I suspect that Isaiah 17 comes out of Israel being uh, pushed into a corner where they can't do anything, and maybe that's because Russia puts in air defense systems um, technologically advanced enough um, that they overwhelm Israel's technology. Now, I kind of doubt that. I think Israel probably has a lot of incredible technology. But they'll come to a point where um, they're backed into a corner. They can't do anything else, um, and they will have to strike, whether that's because uh, Russia, I uh, Iran, or something, someone attacked them, and they have to do a big response to it, <clears throat> or they're simply, they simply have no other, op no other options. They're backed into a corner militarily um, in, you know, by way of invasion or something. And then as a last-ditch effort, um, they um, uh, fulfill the prophecy of Isaiah 17, the destruction of Damascus by way of a tactical nuclear uh, weapon or something that uh, turns into a ruinous heap. Regardless, seven, uh, several things um, that, that point to that, uh, but it's interesting technology that they're using in this case uh, for such a time as now. It seems to be working in Syria, so we'll see how, it, how they continue to roll this out. Thanks for watching, folks. I'll leave it there, and we'll see you guys in the next video.